Lord, you are awesome. Come on, call him by his name. Does he mean anything, anything to you? Has it been good to you? How has God revealed himself to you? <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. My lover, my helper, my peace, my strength. That's who you are. My refuge, my shelter, my hiding place, my rock. Oh, how beautiful are you, Lord. Have a blessed and grab that faith and walk with that faith and run with that faith. That he who promised, he is the one who created heaven and earth. He will make, he will do it. Amen. At his own time, 
But it's only our faith that will make us to, to be victorious Amen. in Him. Amen. Praise the Lord! And he made us in his image. 
So we too can speak to create. Jesus said in John 6, he said the words that I speak, they are spirits and they are life. The words of God are not empty words. They are what Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells us that his word is quick and powerful. It's alive and it's full of power. And it is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it can penetrate any situation. Just like that centurion came to Jesus. And he said to Jesus, he said, just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. It's amazing the power that is embedded in the word of God. And so this month has been declared as a month of celebration. And so it is. And so shall it be. Amen. For as many that hope in that word, for as many that trust in the power that is embedded in the word of God, the God that calls those things that be not as though they were. The one who calls life out of dryness. The one who can turn situations around. The God of all possibilities. That's the God we serve. Amen. And so don't limit the power in the word of God. Just speak the word only. Speak the word only. So pastor took this declaration from Psalm 67 and I just want to take us there. Psalm 67 so that you can know that we are not speaking empty words but we are speaking God's words. Psalm 67 verse 5 to 7 Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then, somebody say then. Then. Then, then after you have praised him, something will happen. Amen. Then, the earth shall yield an increase. Amen. So, increase comes when you praise God. The land opens up when you praise God. Impossible becomes possible when you praise God. God says, let the people praise you, O oh God, the psalmist said. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield an increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. That's not enough. God shall bless us, Amen. and all the ends of the earth shall fear Him. Amen. The sort of blessing that God wants to bless us with is a blessing that makes people to fear Him. It's a blessing that will make the earth to turn to the Lord. Amen. It's a blessing that will declare His praise. Amen. You don't blind battle news. Mm. One me one. For many years, 38 years or so, he was blind. Mm. That was the name they called him. Mm. But one day when he, he heard, because he was blind, mm. that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. They said, shh, 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 shh. Mm. keep quiet, you're too loud. Mm. You know when you praise God, don't praise God with, don't feel you're too dignified to mm. dance. Amen. Amen. He cried louder. Alleluia. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Yes. And Jesus stood. He got the attention of Jesus. Jesus stood still. He said, what can I do for you? You know the end of that story. He got his sight back. What am I saying? When we praise God, our story changes. Amen. The scripture declares, the psalmist said, when we praise him, the earth will give us a harvest. And when God blesses us, people around us will begin to fear him. So I want you to begin this month 
I don't know how you praise God, but today we're going to look at a title, Sacrifice of Praise. I don't know how you praise God. Some of us come to church, we praise God, and we just clap and we stand and we look around. Our, our heart is not in what we're singing. Maybe we don't even know the songs. And maybe we've got pain. Maybe we don't even feel like praising God. How many of you have felt like that? You wake up in the morning and you don't really feel like praising God. You feel, like Pastor said, you feel, God, it's not morning, I'm morning. <laughs> oh, I feel so sad. Anybody can praise God when they're going so good. When there's food on the table and the bank account is very robust and everything is going all well around us, it's so easy to praise God. But today I want to talk about sacrifice of praise. When the goings get tough and you can still say, no matter what, you're my God. I'll praise you anyway. That's a sacrifice of praise. So I took you to that Psalm 67 so that we can know where the declaration came from. That this is our month of celebrations. But there's something we need to do. The scripture says when we praise God, then there is an increase. Then our blessing comes. So we just need to do our bits and God will do his own part. Amen. Amen. So our text is taken from Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. We'll look at verse 6, 14 to 16. That will be our main text, so we can go back to it from time to time. Hebrews 13, 14 to 16. Sacrifice of praise. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Therefore by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. That verse 14 says for here, that means air on earth. We have no continuing city. What that means is that we're not here on earth forever. It's not our continuing city. We don't live here forever, but our home is in heaven. It says, but we seek one to come. We seek a home to come. Our final destination is in heaven. We are strangers and we are pilgrims here on earth. And so, with that at the back of our minds, how should we live our lives while we are here on earth? Verse 15 answers the question. It says, therefore, by him, that is Christ, through Jesus Christ, by him, as many of us that are in him, let us, once in a while, once in a while, I think I have a, two people following me here, the Lord wake us up, says, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. So, our sacrifice of praise is not something we do when the goings are good. It says continually. David said, seven times a day I will praise the Lord. It's not the amount of numbers we get up to praise God, but it's having an attitude of praise always. 
is present in at every point and at every moment. So the scripture says we must offer continually the sacrifice of praise to God. What is a sacrifice? A sacrifice is an offering that you give to God. An offering of your life. An offering of your song. An offering of testimonies. I think it was Hannah. After she bought Samuel, she began to sing in 1 Samuel chapter 2. God gave her a new song. God will give somebody a new song in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. So there must be a continuation. We don't stop. We don't praise God today because I have money. And tomorrow because I don't have money. Sorry, Lord, there's no praise. Do I remember some years back when I was in the medical school? This is the truth. I failed an exam. And prior to that time, I have never failed an exam before. And it was a blow. I was in shock. So I carried my bags and went back home. And for one week, I struggled to pray. For one week. So when I wake up, I'll say, Lord, you know, I love you. I love you, but I just can't pray. <laughs> I kept on saying that every day. Because I knew I needed to talk to God. But this thing was just not flowing. And I read a book, It's Beauty for My Ashes, written by Naomi. No, it's not Naomi, actually. It's, the name is Taiwo Ikomis, the lady that wrote it. And in that story, she narrated how they were in England and they were traveling one day, herself, her husband, and their three boys. And they were involved in an accident. And that accident took the lives of her husband and the three children and she saw an angel rescued her miraculously out of the crushed car and she, when she came out of the car she said she, she just felt like Naomi who lost her husband and her two sons in the land of Moab and God showed her a vision and she saw her husband and the three children in heaven they were all in white robes praising God and having fun. <laughs> Heaven is a good place, you know. Amen. That's why you need to practice to praise Him while you are here. Otherwise, you'll be a misfit. <laughs> is, it, is it not so? The Bible says the 24 elders, they bow day and night, crying, Holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. That's what they do in heaven. It's just praises and praises. You don't find somebody depressed in heaven. <laughs> Nobody will say, Lord, I don't want to praise you today. <laughs> Heaven is full of praise. So we must begin to practice here on earth. So this lady, God showed her the vision. And she saw the whole family, her husband, the three boys, in white apparel, praising God. And that comforted her. She carried her bag and went back to Nigeria. She was from Nigeria. You know what? When I finished reading that book, I remember my mother saying, is this what you've been reading in uni? You know, like, no, you didn't pass that exam. Is this what you've been reading? I didn't answer. <laughs> but by the time I finished reading that book, my mouth that was done opened wide. And I said, Lord, what has happened to me? Like, just can't praise you. <laughs> I felt an exam and I'm not praising you. I started to praise. I felt a release in my spirit. So nothing must ever stop us from praising God. So back to our text. It says, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. I said a sacrifice is an offering that you give willingly an offering of your life. An offering of songs of your lips. 
an offering of your time. Nothing must be too big for us to give as an offering to God. So let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. So the fruit of your lips is a sacrifice to God. But well, what is the fruit of our lips? What comes out when we open our lips? Hmm? Praises. Praises, goodness, testimonies. So when we open our lips, we declare His glory. Amen. Evil must not come out of our lips. Amen. But sacrifice of praise to God. Amen. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. So every time you open your mouth, thank God. In the good times I'm bound, you are God alone, you are on the throne, and right now, in the good times I'm bound, you are God alone, you are on the throne. Amen. So remind yourself that even when the times are bad, you still God. My bad times does not change the faithfulness of God. My sorrow does not change who God is. And if he created me and you to praise him, we must do it anyway. Look at verse 16. It says, but do not forget to do good. So doing good and sharing is also a sacrifice of praise. He said, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. May our sacrifice of praise be pleasing to God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So a sacrifice is an offering to God of our lives. And it must be done in a way that is pleasing to God. You know you can come and lead worship and go through the motions and just get the songs and just sing but it's not really coming from deep within. God is not pleased with that. When we come to church to praise God, not just in church, even at home, when we have our quiet time and we pray, make sure that the praises you're giving to God is coming from the depth of your heart. Amen? Amen. There was a woman in the Bible, the only woman who was barren. Because there is no barren woman in God's house. Why was this woman, why did she become barren? You know David, a man after God's, God's own heart. As he began to praise God, and he took off his robe, and he was dancing, and Mike, Micah, I think her name was, or Mikai, and she looked at him and said, the whole king, don't sing like this. Don't you have dignity? What's the matter with you? And her womb was shut. So we're made to praise God. Let nothing stop you from praising Him. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. says, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Can you see we are priests? Priests offer sacrifices. Our own sacrifices are not of rams and goats anymore because Jesus has offered himself as a sacrifice once and for all. But our own sacrifice is the praise that come out of us to God said a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. So there, you can have some spiritual sacrifices that are not acceptable to God. What makes it not acceptable to God? Because it does not come from the heart. Amen. Amen. So we must offer up spiritual sacrifices sacrifices of our lips, our praises, in a way that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Romans 
chapter 12, verse 1. Are you with me? Don't sleep, otherwise I'll come around and pinch you. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So it is our duty to offer up sacrifices of praise to God. He said, present your bodies, not just our lips, our hearts, our thinking, our attitudes must be a living sacrifice. We can't die because Jesus has already died for us. So we don't need to offer up ourselves as a, as a dead sacrifice. We are alive in Christ. But we must present our bodies. Everything about us must be a living sacrifice. You are not your own. We have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. So we live for him that holds us. We don't live as if we are in control of our lives again. It says this is our reasonable service. So why do we praise God? Why must we offer sacrifice of praise to God? Because it is our duty. That is our service. That's what God created us for. Amen. Amen. Come with me to 1 Peter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. It says, For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, its own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the reason why God called us is to proclaim his praise. Are you proclaiming his praise? Yes. Amen. May our lives proclaim his praise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to look at an example of some people who offered up sacrifices to God. Abel and Cain, Genesis chapter 4. I read from verse 3. In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. Why? We'll soon discover. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance fell, number one, hunger. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you shall rule over it. Couldn't control his anger. Verse 8. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field. The Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? So Cain obviously had attitude problems. If you agree with me. He was an angry man. He was proud. He was snappy. So I don't know what sort of... The Bible did not qualify the sort of offering he brought to the Lord. The Bible just said he brought of the fruit of the ground. But the Bible qualified the offering that Abel brought. He brought the first bone of his flock. The first, he gave the Lord the best. So, sacrifice of praise is giving our best to the Lord in everything that we do. Okay, you might think this is just opening my mouth to praise God. Yes, it's part of it. But more importantly, our lifestyle. How we live our lives is more important to God. I can come to the church and lead praise worship. Or I can go out Monday to Friday or to Saturday and live a reckless life. That's, that's not a sacrifice of praise. Our attitude 
must be a sweet smelling aroma before God. Our way of life must be pleasing to God in or out of church. What you do in the secret must be what you do in the open. Amen. Amen. So God was not happy with him because even though he brought an offering, but his attitude was wrong. So it does not matter how much you give to God. If you're giving it with the wrong attitude, it's not acceptable and it's not pleasing to the Lord. So, and let's not shy away. If we have attitude problems, let's open up to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm struggling with attitude problem. Please help me. I'm struggling to pray. I'm struggling to do this. I need your help. So, Cain's offering was not accepted, but God accepted Abel's offering. Our offering must be with a right attitude. An attitude of humility and reverence. You know when you want to serve a church and maybe somebody tries to correct you that you do it and you feel, why are you correcting me? I know it's not. That's a wrong attitude. God is not pleased with that. If we have a voice of angel to sing and we don't have a right attitude, God is not pleased. You would rather listen to somebody who has a croak. <laughs> a croaky voice. But his heart is right. His attitude is right. That somebody like Lucifer who has the tongues of angel. Or the attitude is not right. So when we come to church, even outside church, let's make sure that we're worshipping the Lord with a right attitude. Amen. Amen. The Bible says Jesus, in Isaiah it said Jesus was led as a sheep to be slaughtered, yet he opened not his mouth. What a humility, what a humble man. He was stripped, he was spat on, he was slapped, he was mocked, king of the Jews, yet he opened not his mouth. That's what I call an offering. That's what I call a sacrifice. Living by the word of God, even when it's not convenient for you, is what I call a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's a shame. You know, when I got born again, we were really out of God. Mm -hmm. When I see Christianity born again these days, I'm like, Lord, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. When I got born again, my fine clothes were in the bottom of my suitcase. Mm -hmm. No makeup. Mm -hmm. Because everything, you just feel like every, Lord, everything is for you. Mm -hmm. Everything, whatever you ask me. But these days... I oh God, you know, you, you understand. You know, we have to apply common sense here. <laughs> What's happening to the church? Is the church a social guide right now? Are we going to heaven? <laughs> we have to. Because we are only strangers and pilgrims here on earth. So let's begin to live as people that are getting ready to go to heaven. I'll give you this testimony. I went to the Christian bookshop one or two years ago. And one of the brothers there said to me, oh, this person, this young man that he knew was dying of cancer. And he was only like, maybe he's 20, he's maybe 21 or 20 or 19, something like that. And everybody was so sorrowful. And what actually shocked me was this guy said to them, this guy with cancer dying, this Christian brother, said to them, I don't understand you guys. Because if heaven is actually my home, why are you all sorrowful? How beautiful is that? So why are we afraid to go if it's actually our home? <laughs> so we must offer to God a sacrifice of praise, not just the fruit of our lips, but an attitude that is pleasing to the Lord. Amen. Yes, man. Look at Matthew 15 verse 8. Matthew 15 verse 8. Jesus said, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So it's possible to draw to God and say, Lord, I love you. You know I love you. But our hearts may be far from him. May that not be our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. So God wants us to honor him, not just with our lips, but a heartfelt honor. 
a heartfelt worship. Amen. Amen. David was a man after God's own heart. He praised the Lord from his heart. And that's what God is looking for. God is looking for true worshippers. Those that are worshipping in spirit and in truth. No matter the situation. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 19. Why should we praise God? Look at this scripture. It says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the holy may fail, and the fields yield no fruit, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the salt, Yes, I will rejoice in the Lord. I love this. It says, look, things may not be going the way I want it, but I'm still going to re rejoice. I think rejoicing, praising God is a choice that we make. Not because of our circumstances, but because of who God is. He deserves my praise, whether the goings are good or the goings are bad. I'll praise him anyway. Amen. Amen. Is somebody like that? Are you going to say, Lord, no matter the weather, no matter the season I find myself in, you deserve my praise. Anyway, I will praise you. Say, yes, I will rejoice in the Lord. I may not understand what I'm going through. You know, there are so many things that happen to us. We've prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And it looks like nothing is happening. I don't have to understand it. But one thing I know is that God is faithful. Amen. One thing I know is that God is on my case. He loves me. Amen. The Bible says if he can give me Jesus, what else will he not give to me? If Jesus can die for me, what else do I need that God will not do? Amen. Amen. Just quickly, I said, why praise God in adversity? Because when things are good, we tend to miss, we tend to behave ourselves, isn't it? We praise God, we come to church, you know, because things are really rosy. But when things are bad, and we keep going, you know, so what keeps us to praise Him, even in times of adversity? I said, because God has promised us victory. Okay, Romans 8, 37. God has promised us victory. I'll quickly open to that. Romans 8, 37. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So, his word, his promises are yea and amen. God cannot lie. If he has said we have victory, we have victory. It's only a matter of time. Verse 35 says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Verse 37, yet, in all these things, in all these adversities, we are more than conquerors. That's why I'm praising. Because God has promised me victory. So I'm praising because of his words, because of his promises. Amen. Amen. Why should I praise God in adversity? I said because God meant it for good. Who, who? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God meant it for good. Romans 8, 28. I'll praise him because God meant it for good. Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that all things, the good and the bad, all things work together for good. You see? All things are working for your good. Yeah. Joseph said to his brothers, he said, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. If they had not sold him to Egypt, he wouldn't have become the prime minister of Egypt. So even the things that you think are against you are actually working in your favor. Believe that because the word of God says so. It says, and we know that all things work together for good. To who? To those who love God. If you love God, then that adverse situation is going to work around for your good. Amen. Why should I praise God in adversity? Because God is in control. <laughs> Any 
anytime you feel you are out of control, God is in control. Have you been out of control before? I have been. You feel like, Lord, ah, I'm not in control. This, everything is just going. What should I do? And you feel like giving up. No, God is in control. So praise Him because He is in control. In Mark 4, chapter 4, verses 39 to 41, the disciples were afraid and worried because they were crossing to the other side and the wind was against them and the boat was being filled with water and they thought they were going to drown. And Jesus arose and spoke to the wind. So when the disciples felt out of control, Jesus was still in control. Amen. So when you feel that everything is coming against you, just be rest assured that God is in control. Amen. And can he leave you to suffer? Amen. He's your father. When your children ask you nice things, in fact, you do more than they ask from you, isn't it? How much more God to us? So when we are out of control, God is in control. So praise him because he's in control. Amen. I said because God commands it. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 What does it say? 1 Thessalonians 5.18 It says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. You know, some people complained and moaned the Israelites in the wilderness. When God gave them manna, they still complained. God gave them water, they still complained. God parted the Red Sea, they complained. He made a way in the wilderness, they complained, they moaned. And that's why they didn't inherit the promised land. Because it's when we moan and grumble and complain, we are saying, Lord, we don't trust you enough. I don't, I don't think you can handle this situation. Amen. Amen. Let's not do that. Why should we praise God in adversity? Because God loves you. No one of my revelation is the love of God. How deep the Father's love is. How fast be your love measure. That he should give his only son to make our wretch his treasure. How deep that love. Because God loves me. He gave me Jesus to die for me. He made a wretch his own treasure just for me. I am his chosen. You are his chosen. He loves you. So do you think he's not aware of the situation? You need to praise him because he knows about it. Yes. Said so in everything we should give thanks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 32. Mm -hmm. I'm beginning to round up Romans 8 32. It says, who did not, He who did not spare his own son, mm -hmm. but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Stop thinking swallow. You know many times we limit God. We think some big things are not meant for us. We think we're humble because we're not asking for big things. The God of the whole universe, he loves us. The Bible says if he did not spare Jesus and gave him up for us, Will he not with him also freely give us all things? All things. So because God loves us so much, if he can give us Jesus, he will give us all things. So we give our sacrifice of praise because of that. Acts 16 verse 25. Let's look at these people that praise God in adversity. Acts 16 verse 25. Paul and Silas, because they ministered to someone, they were jailed, they were beaten. Act 16, verse 25. See, you know that girl with the spirit of uh, divination that was crying after them, saying, These men are the men of God. Paul knew that something was wrong. So Paul rebuked the spirit and the girl became normal. But this girl was making profit for some people. <laughs> so the owner 
got annoyed and they arrested Paul and Silas. And they beat them very well. And then jailed them. But here what the scripture says, verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. At midnight. When you feel sorrowful, wake up in the night. You know what? We shouldn't be sleeping through the night. We should be waking up in the night to pray. So at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And they sang hymns to God. They didn't sing it quietly. The Bible says the prisoners were listening to them. These people were locked up in the inner prison. They must have been, they must have raised their voices and shouted loud. Even in their pain. They've just been beaten. They've just been arrested. They've just been imprisoned. And they still think that they should still praise God. That's the attitude we need to have. Verse 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake. Uh -huh. The half is giving up an increase now. Amen. As they were praising God. Amen. And the foundations of the prison were shaken. Hallelujah. <laughs> because God came down. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's chains were loosed. Hallelujah. How amazing. Your suffering is a blessing to somebody else. These people suffered. God wanted to reach out to the jailer. He wanted to reach out to those in prisons. That was why they went to the prison. But they could have said, Oh Lord, we just preached for you. We just delivered that girl. And now we are in prison. They didn't have that attitude. Their attitude was wherever we find ourselves. God is in charge, is in control. We must proclaim his praise. Amen. So they praised him. And the prisoners were set free, and the jailer and his household came to the Lord. Hallelujah. What you count as negative today, what you see as challenge today, is a blessing Amen. in disguise. Amen. John chapter 6. Let's look at the examples of Jesus. John chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Don't worry, I'll round it up. John chapter 6, 9 to 11. This was the feeding of the 5,000. So these people were in the wilderness and there was no food. Let's read from verse 9. Verse 8. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. Verse 11. That's the one I wanted to take out. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. You know the rest of the story. What's my point here? Even in little blessing, okay? We're talking about feeding 5,000 here. And somebody said there's a boy with a little lunch, with, a, with his lunch. And the five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus took it. What did he do? He gave thanks. So even in your little, give thanks. Jesus showed us a perfect example. You may not have millions, you may, we may not have crowd yet, but we should be grateful for the little that we have. Amen. That's what I call sacrifice of praise. Mm -hmm. Just look in what? You've got something. There's something. You've got not even something. You've got loads of blessings Amen. that the Lord has blessed you with. Be grateful for them. Mm -hmm. Be grateful for what you have. Mm -hmm. And then many will come. Amen. In conclusion, God is seeking for true worshippers. Those that are worshipping in spirit and in truth. Not those that are worshipping because of what they can get for him. We don't praise God because of because we want to move his hands. We praise him because we love him. So that's why in the good or bad, because you love him, you praise him anyway. Amen. So God, Jesus said to that woman, that Samaritan woman, said God is seeking true worshippers. 
those that worship him in spirit and in truth. Not just with their lips, or in spirit and according, living their lives according to his word. In the good and the bad, those who will offer up their lives as an offering unto God and live by the truth of his word. Are you a true worshiper? Do you sacrifice? You know, your praise becomes a sacrifice when you can do it even against all odds. When Job lost his everything, he lost his children, he lost his money, he lost his everything. He baffled me because he shaved his head, he took off his clothes and he bowed down and worshipped. That's what I call a sacrifice. When there is nothing on the ground and I can still worship and bow to the Lord. And I can still openly confess him that he is God. That is a sacrifice of praise. I don't know how this message has come to you today as we bow our heads to pray. But I want us to pray the Lord. Thank you for your word. May my life be a living sacrifice. May the sacrifice of my lips be pleasant to you. Amen. May my sacrifice be acceptable to you. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for those that will worship you in spirit and in truth. Those that will live their lives to proclaim your praise in or out of church. In good times and in bad times. Lord, we receive the strength to do that. Because in heaven, that's all we'll be doing. Just praising you. And how beautiful it is if we start practicing now. <laughs> knowing that you are in control. Knowing that the winds and the sea obey you. Knowing that you love us deeply. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you. Give us an attitude to praise you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you here and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? This message means nothing to you. Because anyone outside the fold cannot praise God. Say, by Him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. The only way our praise can be acceptable to God is if we are in Christ, if we are in Him. If you're not in Christ and you know and you know it, I say, if, if, I, if, you, if you're not sure that if you die today, you will go to heaven, then maybe you need to be born again. Maybe you need to be born again. Maybe you need to give your heart to Jesus. The Bible says God so loved us and he gave his son to die for us. Why will you refuse that gift of love? If you are here today and you have not made Jesus the Lord and the master of your life and living for him, I want you to open up your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, save me. I'm sorry for my sins. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, Son of the living God, come into my heart. And be my Lord and Savior and my Master. I believe you died and shed your blood to wash my sins away. I receive forgiveness of sins. I confess every unrighteousness before you. Wash me clean by your blood. Make me your child. Write my name in the book of life. I turn my back to the world. I will follow you. In the name of Jesus, I surrender my life to you, Lord. Give God praise if you've prayed that prayer or you've prayed it before or you're a child of God. Just give him praise. Give him praise. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe your word. I believe your word. I believe your word. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for your word. May we leave your presence with an attitude of praise. May we remember these words and praise you in season and out of season. May our lives be pleasurable to you. May our lives be acceptable, our lifestyle be acceptable unto you. Where we are struggling, we receive the strength to overcome the weaknesses and to live for you. We thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. God is good. Oh. I hope you got one or two things out of that. Amen.